When you're building out a Stripe integration that involves features that are dependent on time, it can be challenging to know if your application is actually doing what it's supposed to. Features like subscriptions can have billing cycles that take days, weeks, or even months, and you're definitely not going to wait that long as you're going through your development flow. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how development tools like Stripe Workbench and Test Clocks can make this experience so much nicer for you. Over in Visual Studio Code, I'm using C Sharp and the Stripe.NET SDK inside of a Polyglot Notebook. Now to create a test clock, you'll need to use the test clock service and provide it with the name of the clock you want to create, as well as setting the frozen time property. Now that frozen time property represents the time at which your simulation is going to start. Next, you'll want to create a customer. Now when using test clocks, you can't attach it to an existing customer you have to create a new test customer to associate with that simulation. So when specifying the customer creation options, you'll notice that I'm providing it with the test clock ID. So we'll go ahead and create this customer. Now, the next thing we'll need to do is create a subscription for the simulation. But first, we'll need a price ID. So let's head over to the Stripe dashboard. I'm going to go to my product catalog. I have a variety of products. And here you can see some of them have recurring prices. I'm going to just select the first one. I'm going to select the price. And then I'm going to copy this price ID. Now, when I run this notebook, it's going to ask me for that price ID. I'm going to hit enter. And now it should have gone ahead and created my subscription. If we head back over to the Stripe dashboard, and if I click on subscriptions, I should see that my new test subscription was created with our fake user. The way you know a subscription is attached to the test clock is you'll see a little clock icon on the far right side in this particular view. You'll see something similar if you go over to customers. So if I take a look at this fake customer, Notice also on the right side, I have that little clock icon. So that means that these objects are all associated with the test clock. Now we'll actually run the simulation. Back in Visual Studio Code, using the test clock service, we're going to advance time forward by one month. Back in the dashboard, going to subscriptions, and I'm going to select this subscription that we created. You should notice that it's now moved forward from August to September, right? We've just moved forward ahead in time with the simulation. If we open up Strike Workbench, we click on events, we can see all the various events that were triggered. So you can see events like, like invoice created, upcoming invoice, customer subscription updated. You'll even see webhook events were fired for the test clock, like test helpers, test clock, that ready. These are some of the events that your application will be listening to as you're building out your integration. Now let's try a different scenario. Now this particular payment method is going to result in a failed charge. So anytime the business tries to charge the customer for the next billing cycle, it should fail. Now let's actually see if we can run this inside of the browser. Now notice it says current simulation time, September 8th. In the browser, I can hit advanced time. I want to move this forward by a month. And now it's advanced to simulation. And now that the simulation has advanced to the next billing cycle, notice that the subscription is canceled. Opening up Workbench again, and I'm going to refresh the events. You should see I have events like customer subscription deleted, invoice updated. But what exactly happened here? I want to click on this subscription deleted event and take a look at some of the event data. As I scroll through and I'm looking to see what happened, here it says cancellation details, payment failed. So that means the business tried to charge the customer, but they weren't able to retrieve funds from their default payment method. So now by default, the subscription was canceled. Now on your backend, your application would need to listen to this event and run whatever business workflow it needs to actually cancel the service. And maybe even notify the customer that they should probably update their payment method. Now that we've run through a couple of scenarios in the simulation, let's go ahead and complete the simulation. Now to do that, we'll just need to delete the test clock. Now all you need to do is call delete and the test clock service. And back in the dashboard, all of those objects before that were attached to that simulation should be deleted. So you'll notice that fake customer is deleted. If we go back into subscriptions, notice that got cleaned up as well. Now that you've seen how tools like test clocks and workbench together can make it so much easier for you to diagnose and build out these time-based functionalities, we hope you try them out and let us know what you think. And if you want to learn more, there's actually a companion blog post for this video. So we hope you take a look at that. And of course, we have tons of references inside of the Stripe documentation. Now we'll have links for all of these inside of the video description. So make sure you check them out. And of course, we hope you take a look at some of the other amazing videos that we're building out here at the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.